We're doing a social topic. Tub doesn't know what we're going to watch and what we're going to talk about. And it's part related to the state, part related to locally here. So I'm going to kind of surprise him like I normally this do with great. our social topic. Mm -hmm. I even surprised him with having a full conversation on mute by accident. But I did. That was step one, yeah. That was step one. I'm always full of surprises. So here we are. So let me play this little clip real quick. And let's just see what he All has All right, we're watching two clips for the pause. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, and I may have to, we'll see, we'll see what, what happens. What opponents okay. call the don't say gay bill has cleared its first Florida Senate committee with a party line vote. Republicans pushing it through despite LGBTQ community outcry. Our Capitol reporter Forrest Saunders has the details on that. The bill's most controversial provision is this. Districts, quote, may not encourage classroom discussion about sexual orientation or gender identity in primary grade levels or in a manner that is not age appropriate. And parents are permitted to sue if schools don't comply. We need some stability. We need parents in charge. Sponsor Senator Dennis Baxley says he's targeting curriculum, not conversations. Also, kindergarten through third graders, not older students. Parents, he says, should be having these discussions, not teachers. These children do not belong to the state. They belong to families. And without their involvement, there's no success for children. But opposition was fierce. Passing this bill will end lives, and that blood will be on your hands if you I vote yes. Many told lawmakers the bill is vague and could chill important conversations in school. Others call it offensive and worry gay or trans youth will suffer in silence. I was once in third grade, fourth grade, and I was still transgender. That includes Andrew Triolo, a transgender teen from Brevard. Passing this bill will go completely against normalizing LGBTQ identity in children when it's totally fine for a kid to be straight. The White White House, too, offering a statement against the bill, saying it's, quote, designed to target and attack the kids who need support the most. By your vote, Senate Bill 1834 is reported favorably. Even so, the GOP majority pushing the policy through, now headed to its second of three Senate committees. Enough is enough! <laughs> enough is enough! As opponents vow to keep up the fight. At the Capitol, Forrest Saunders, ABC Action News. Okay, so what do you think about that? Because there's a bill now, right now, mm -hmm. SB, I think it was 1834. We'll look it up in a moment here. Um, but yeah, there is actually a bill, and it is what they're calling the Don't Say Gay Bill. That's uh, obviously not what the bill's actual right. title is. It's uh, SB, yeah, 1834, and it's an, uh, it's, it's an act relating to parental <laughs> rights and education. So what's your first thought on having seen this? Now, we haven't seen what, what has been said the locally. Local, right, okay. So I will tell you that whoever that gentleman was... Uh, that they spoke to is obviously a lawmaker and he's like it's not the school's position to parent these it's the parents position they mentioned a couple different times right yes okay i'm a big advocate is i think that we're giving the school entirely too much say and entirely too much control over our kids okay and i think this is an example of because in a christian family mm -hmm. okay I, I i don't i don't avoid these conversations but i didn't even growing up when my kids were growing up i didn't i didn't avoid the conversation but it's right. my place so that I can present it in the way that I want them to understand it, to hear and stuff along those lines. I don't know how it will be presented to these. These are children we're talking about. Right. Children, like, in all honesty, if you're talking about in a high school, our right, kids are starting, they get in their own minds. Got to, and I'm more open to it there. But what they're talking about is, it's not like I said, <clears throat> well, like fifth grade and under or something, right. roughly. <clears throat> I'm in agreement. Okay. I'm, I'm in agreement that, you know what, I, I don't think that that becomes the school's responsibility. Okay. I think it's an overstep of what they ought to be doing. We just talked about this in the last segment. Right. Where we're talking about, hey, you know what, why don't we focus on the things that you're actually there for? Because here's what's funny. I went through school. I went through the public school system, clearly. Mm -hmm. and, and so with that, you know what's funny? It's no, very obvious. Nowhere, yeah, no, it's very clear. Uh, nowhere in there did we ever discuss the homosexuality and stuff like that. But guess what? I still dealt with it. I started learning how to do Like It was still there. It's still out there. It didn't take the school to explain it so that I could understand it in the right. third grade. Right. But I guess to, to play devil's advocate here, okay. is, isn't you know the third grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, if you had the kid that either was actually gay or uh, or was perceived to be gay, right? Maybe you just had a guy, young a young man who was maybe a little bit more effeminate and mm -hmm. you know whatever, and or just awkward, you know, because so the problem is when I was we, younger, because like a lot we, of kids we, got labeled as we gay. Talk, who right, that's exactly that's what's happening. If you if you act a certain way like this or whatever, you you have no gay tendencies right. in, in you. That's just who you are. Right. And it doesn't mean you're gay, but now we've kind of lumped them into that right. group, and now they've almost been thrown into that group because right. oh. Oh, I must be gay then because right. I'm different than those. Right, guys. right, right. But where I was going is, mm -hmm. isn't it? Isn't it fair to say that 
part of a responsibility of a school, since they have children there eight hours a day, five days a week, however many uh, days out of the year, 200 mm-hmm. some days, I think it's... 180. You know, oh, 180. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 180 days out of the year. That's a long time. And uh, it's a long time for a, a student who may be perceived as, you know, gay or transgender or whatever, and, and they're not, and they're being picked on and bullied. Mm-hmm. Um, or if they are, it's a long time if they're picked on and bullied, right? Like, so, you know... And um, isn't it kind of fair to say, like, hey, we need to have some education around these areas so that kids will be less hostile to other kids okay. and be more... Okay, let's clear something up. No, it's not going to happen. You know what okay. kids are? Kids are mean. Okay. Let, let, let's just be honest. I'm so tired. I was living in a time when everybody's feelings and stuff like this. Here's what happens. Kids are mean sometimes. Now, I'm not saying it's okay to make fun of everybody. No, but that's what we do. That's what kids, that's what right. adults do. Let's right. be honest, okay? okay. We, we make fun of people who aren't in our group. That, that's what tends okay. to happen, okay? So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to tell them that everything's going to change on. This is how it has to be. Okay. Okay. Did you have any of the special training coming up? No. No. And yet we learned how to function as adults. We learned how to take this idea on. Okay. Um, and maybe families have the roles. I have a gay brother. Okay, so inside of this, I dealt with it at home. Right. Uh, my parents dealt with like there. Well, are... What if your parents were hostile? I don't think they were very open to the idea. No, I mean, not yours. So let me rephrase that. What about a parent that is hostile? Uh huh. Like there was a. I just read a recent story. But then it becomes the school's job though to fix that. Well, I. So I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to say like, here is a. And it's going to, you know, I, it, by the way, people remember. Don't be taking me too hard here. I'm playing devil's advocate so yes. we can have a good conversation. Uh-huh. Um, you're even willing to take I, the I, wrong I, side in order to yeah, have a good we conversation. Yeah, because need, we, need we need to explore this, right? Mm-hmm. We need we need to get, work out some of these things. And so part of it is saying like, hey, some some of these students, like that one student was saying like, hey, you're going to have blood on your hands. I think that was a bit of hyperbole. That's, way, yeah. That's hyperbole. But uh-huh. let's just say that there is going to be some physical problems, right? Like there will be that dad who's all like, no son of mine's going to be blah, 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 right. And he like is very verbally abusive, maybe even physically abusive. So isn't it, isn't it fair to say that a school might offer a safer place where a kid can be at least, at least there they can be expressive, even if they can't be at home. Is that what school's for? I mean, I've, is that school, is school is there to be, how do you, how do you just present? Like it? a safe place, a safe, yeah. Yeah, expressive is the word. Yeah, expressive. So okay, can, no, school's not about, school is about, it is not supposed to be. Okay. This is be a function in school. I'm there to learn. Right. Okay. Now, how I treat these other people in these situations, that's not right. what they, what are we, what are we talking right. about? This is the purpose of right. this building. But, so when, when does it cross? Okay, so let me ask you a question. Then. So then you would be fine if Christian teachers started pushing their views on to these kids in the third well, grade. That's not the argument, though. The argument isn't that the... No, no, but what we're saying, though... The is... argument from the right is that this is what's happening. The argument from the left, if you will, is that, hey, it's not that we're trying to create an environment where teachers can push their views. You don't think... I... Hold on. I'm t- what I'm t- makes t- you think that's not what's I, going I, to happen, I'm, t- I'm telling you what the arguments are, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. I got that. So, so we're having a conversation about those arguments and saying, okay, let's explore these arguments, you know? Because uh, right now, I feel like there's too many arguments where it's just like one-upping and yelling at each other and all right. that. So they're not really exploring and saying, okay, let's take your argument and let's explore that argument, right? So I'm doing that. I'm doing that in, on behalf of the people that are supporting this. I'm saying, all right, well, there's a there's an environment to be expressive. And this is why I bring that up. And I think there's a, I think it's fair to have the conversation even if we ultimately say, nah, it's not, really, it's not what it's for. That one student that was speaking, the one with the, the colored hair or whatever, yeah, okay. In, in like in the middle of the clip, mm-hmm. and they were speaking at like the Florida. State. So it said blood on the hands. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I said blood. Um, they said, uh, I think it, no, it was the it was the it was the young it was the young guy afterward that had the piercings in his With leg, the black hair and the black, black hair. hair. Uh-huh. And he said it's okay for kids to be straight. Now it's kind of a weird comment because it's like, well, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Like nobody's saying that you can't be gay. I think I snickered a little but, bit. But I think mm-hmm. I think what I think what they're getting at, and I'm speaking again on behalf <clears> of somebody else. If you're a student in school and you're like, man. You're talking to your buddies and you're like, that girl over there is pretty hot. Nobody has a problem with that. Nobody, like, yeah, yeah, she is pretty hot. Or, dude, what are you talking about? She's ugly, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, but it, it's okay to have that conversation among the peers. But what they're saying is like, if you're a gay student or if you're a trans student, you 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 can't have a similar conversation because the environment does not permit it. So you can't no, say, I'm Man, you, I'm that I'm dude I'm over there, he's pretty hot. I would like to, you know, whatever. No, but hold on. That's not true. Because here's what you're talking about. You're talking about click versus click, group okay. versus group. Guess what? So if you are gay at that, if you think you're gay okay. at 
a seven-year-old, okay? Guess what this probably are? You're going to fall into a group of kids who are like you. That's what happens instantly. Okay. You get clicks. Okay. So what you're talking about is these kids said, hey, that girl over there is nice looking. Okay, so the gay kids would come together and go, hey, that boy over there, or that you. girl over there, okay. she's nice looking. <clears throat> so we're now we're going to just basically tell you that you have to accept everybody. Okay. It, even if you are told at home, we don't accept this. Gotcha. Okay. Here's so the point. nerds aren't trying to talk to the jocks about no, no, about exactly. Dungeons and Dragons. Listen, these 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 issues have been there all through time. Right. They're always been there. So here's what you do: you circle up with people who are like you. That, okay. That's the reality of it. We do that as adults. We circle up with people who are like us. Right. Okay. So what I'm getting at, my concern is now: do I want parents to have this conversation with their kids? Yes. Right. Parents. Yeah. It's it's not for the school. It's not for the school to start because my like I started asking the question. What happens if you have Christian teachers or whatever mm -hmm. that want to teach these things? They'd be like, "Whoa, you can't do that. That's not right. what this is about." But wait a minute, you can go the other side and say it's acceptable. Right. So we got to draw that line all the way across. Let's yeah. go. Let's go where this is where we right. belong at. So my complaint about this is more of a, it's not for the school to take care of. Gotcha. Well, let's hear what. Okay. So if you <clears throat> if you win the election, when you win, when, win the election, when, uh -huh. um, you will become at large five. Right. And let's just say that this Joshua Hicks wins. Right. Um, and he will be at large two. two. So you would actually be peers working together. working together. So let's hear what he has to say. Okay. And it's a video. Yeah, it's a video. Okay. It's a video clip. Where'd you find the video? I, um, on Twitter. Oh, okay. there's a lot of stuff on Twitter. I, I don't. Mean, I don't mess with Twitter. I, I recommend you not. But uh, let's, <laughs> let's let's see what we got. All here. right. So I may have. Uh, I may take a moment, folks, to get the audio correct. Uh, but. Hey everyone, it's Joshua. Let's have a chat. The Florida legislature has fast-tracked yet another bill that politicizes our classrooms and attacks LGBTQ plus people for political gain. It's revolting. While continuing the trend of threatening our public school teachers is concerning enough, the Don't Say Gay bill attempts to completely erase Florida's vibrant LGBTQ plus community from sight, banning any discussion of sexual orientation or gender identity in classrooms or on school property and outlining legal punishments for teachers who do so. This irresponsible legislation threatens the health and safety of tens of thousands of youth across the state who are already more at risk for bullying and discrimination. According to Florida's own health department, over 40% of LGBTQ plus kids have seriously considered suicide. We should be creating a safe learning environment for them not making it worse. As a gay man running to serve openly on the Jacksonville City Council, it's impossible for me to fathom just how heartless a proposal can weave its way through our state government with ease. But to those this bill would impact, just know this, we love you. It does get better. And while it might take some time, we will defeat bigotry being promoted by ego-driven politicians once and for all. How many buttons did he just push there? Of yours? Just period. Okay, for one thing, oh, they're silencing us and we're being pushed to the background. No, you're not. You, listen, you, okay. Is this where you tank your run? No, because I will steal my, and if I do, who cares? Okay, so here, right. here, here's where I'm getting at. Okay, because... Listen, there, there was this thing that was going around for a little while there. It was like, listen, the black community could learn something from the LGBTQ, whatever they got going on. Right. It's just because smaller amount of them made such a big stink and look at all the attention they started getting. Right. Okay. So here's the point. That is a lie. When you start saying, well, they're silencing us. and No, you're not. You have every right to go and voice and do whatever. Right. There's a place for it. It's not the school. Right. Now, with that, and he, he threw bigotry in there. Right. Okay, let me let me clear something up. I can Ooh, disagree with he something did push some buttons, and not he? be a bigot. Right. Okay. Okay. Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm amused in a way, uh, but in a way, I'm like, wow, I wasn't expecting this response. Uh, well, you got him fired up. Because here's what happened: is that to to say that says, okay, if I don't agree with you, I'm right. a bigot now. Right. That's absurd. And, and this is what I'm getting tired of. This is how they get people to their side, or they make it so people shut up and say nothing. Right. That's my problem. They silence people by saying, if you think something different than this, this is who you are. So right. what people do, they say nothing. Right. So I'm like, you know what? No, guess what? I have, If you want to do that, that's fine. That's your business. I never, right. I never stop that. Listen, once again, I don't hate gay people. Right. And the problem is when you start lumping that in saying, hey, if I don't agree with the fact that these kids, children, should be taught this type of thing. Right. Now I'm a bigot. Right. 
So let's let's back up a wee bit here. Okay. <laughs> and let's talk. So he's so he's specifically talking about a bill. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's fair to argue that sometimes people do write legislation that is meant to stifle other people's speech or at least intimidate them in a way, right? Like th- this kind of thing. Well, right, that's not what this is doing. They're not saying that and so, kids and students can't say anything about being gay. It's not saying that at all. Those kids can still say sure, that. Sure. So, so let's take a look at what the bill said. Okay. And we're going to pull it up on the screen here so that we can read it. And and we're going to let's, let's kind of match up with what has been said about this bill and whether or not we believe that the bill itself does it, 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 if there's any merit to what they're saying. Okay. Okay. Because well, well, with what, uh, Josh, Josh Hicks or okay. the uh, the folks that were on the the previous video clip. So here it is. We have it up on screen. So what I did was it's a, it's a four page bill. It's not huge. Okay. Uh, the very first part of it, as we've went over before, is just a bunch of the you know that very super duper one long sentence about what this bill is supposed to do. Right. So it's like you know. We're not going to go through all of it, but an act relating to parental rights and education. It amends 1001.42 of the Florida statutes requiring district school boards to adopt procedures that comport with certain provisions of law, blah, 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 so on and so forth. So it's basically listing out all the things that this is supposed to do, you know, prohibiting school district personnel from discouraging or prohibiting parental notification and involvement in critical decisions. So this is just kind of like a, a synopsis, mm-hmm. right? So let's get down here to what the, the actual language that would be implemented, okay? okay? So here we got student welfare under section eight of uh, uh, just under uh, under section eight of one thousand one point forty two, right? And so they would uh, add in anything that's underlined as an addition. So I've got it highlighted. And it says the procedures must reinforce the fundamental right of parents to make decisions regarding the upbringing and control of their children by requiring school district personnel to encourage a student to discuss issues relating to his or her well-being with his or her parent or to seek permission to discuss and facilitate <clears throat> discussion of the issue with the parent. So what's wrong with this particular line here? Do you see anything wrong with it? Mm. Okay, because what there are, I, I guess the argument here is that some, because he, he uh, Joshua Hicks said it like there's tens of thousands. I, I think that number is probably yeah, exaggerated because the argument wasn't that there are tens of thousands of kids that are in the LGBTQ plus community. I agree with that. There probably are, right? There's like 22 million in people in 5% Florida. of the population identifies as gay by, by, by CDC guidelines. Sure, sure. 5%. Sure. So are there tens of thousands who, who, who might um, identify with something other than your standard, very stereotypical heterosexual? Maybe. Sure, I'll go with that. Fine. The question is, are tens of thousands of them all at risk? I'm not so sure about that. I think that there is a lot more good families than are being given credit for. And I think what's happening is you're taking, you're saying like, look, we've got this huge uh, group of people. And rather than saying there's a very small segment under for, for which they are in a, um, a hostile environment at home, mm-hmm. right? For whatever reason. You know, maybe their parents are bigots or maybe their parents are just alcoholic drunks and they're just losers all around. Right. Whatever the case may be. I think what's happening is that they're saying like, look, we got tens of thousands of kids. And then they're saying, rather than saying there are some that are at risk, they're all at risk. And I think this is the core problem. This is what we saw with COVID. One of my big issues with COVID, right, is that we implemented procedures to deal with everybody Everybody. rather than saying, who is actually the one at risk and how can we how can we narrow down our work to help those particular individuals and that's one that's one of the reasons why I generally oppose these kind of laws is because they're very overarching and they they assume more people need the help than really do and so therefore we spread out our resources to help people who aren't really at risk if if you had a child who was gay mm-hmm. or even decide let's say you have a 14 year old child and they said, Dad, I think I may be transgender. Are you going to beat them? No. Are you going to scold them and yell at them? Yeah. No. Are you going to try to send them some camp to make them straight? Yeah. No. Okay. So likely they're not at any risk. And, and bear in mind my position, I'm a pastor. Right. So they're so likely not at on one extreme of it, right. it's probably going right. to be me. So, so in your home, they would not be at risk. No. So this this law, um, I, I or the criticism of this law, doesn't apply to you. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't need to spend time worrying about any children in your home. Same with me. I've said this before. I think the greatest response that I've ever seen, I saw it on Twitter somewhere or on social media. Somebody said um, uh, when their child came to them and said and opened up about their sexuality or their Mm -hmm. gender or whatever, they said, I'm here for you. 
now let's let, let's uh, let's have age appropriate rules about dating, and we'll adjust them as you get older and more mature. But that, you would do that with any. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Like okay, if you if if my if my son is a heterosexual, if he's if he's straight. He needs guidelines that are age appropriate for mm -hmm. dating girls when he becomes old enough to worry about it, right? Right. Same thing if he was gay. Same thing if he was transgender. But he needs guidelines that are age appropriate and say, look, we love you. You're, you're a great you're, kid. You're saying the biggest part of it. You decide in right. your home. Right, right. This is how this plays right. out. It is but, not up to the school correct. to make that assumption. Right, right. And so here's, here's I'm addressing the what's concern next? though. What, what's right. next? Sure. What happens when they want to start teaching these other things? Right. And we go, well, you know, we already allow them to do this. Yes. What, what, and how do you think we've gotten to where we are now? Right. That now, what we, what we say last segment, 34th in, in the world for science right. and math. Because these science and math right. become less important. Right. So, and because of all this other stuff is taking it, it does. And, and I think <clears throat> part of the problem is that we're allowing people to box us in and take care of everyone when not everyone needs taken care of. Mm -hmm. If a child is in my home or your home and they're one of those 10,000, Trust me, they don't need, they don't, they do not need a safe place at school. They have one at home. Right. Right. In these two households. So I don't need a, I don't need a law in favor of them. I don't need a law to protect them. I don't need any laws whatsoever. Right. So therefore you can take me out of the equation. I'm one less person. You're one less person. There are how many, how many are... other thousands of people are one less person. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. All the kids that are straight. They're also basically one less person, at least on the basis of sexuality oh, and gender, here. right? Yep. So we can remove them out of the equation. So now we've narrowed it down to how many few thousand people at best kids and, and then, and that need some assistance. Because we're also talking about like fifth grade and under. Right. Like, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Oh. That, that's coming up here in a minute. Oh, oh okay. So. And, and, and so <clears throat> for that, then here's what you tend to do. Anytime you have a special situation that warrants a special, you mm -hmm. address it. You address right. individually right. on those grounds. Right. And, and and it's very interesting, I think. Um, I've read a little bit about the AIDS crisis, which dealt with the the the, the, the gay community, mm -hmm. particularly gay men. Right. Um, gay men at the time were the, the most at risk. Um, I think they were the most at risk even more than intravenous drug, drug users. Right. And I think it was because there just happened to be more gay men. Mm -hmm. uh, then there were, you know, I could be wrong on that, but my understanding is but that if it starts in one community, right. it's probably where it's going to flourish at but, because that's but, where it was. But then what happened was we created this huge campaign to say okay. everybody can get AIDS. Well, technically, yes, everybody can. But the reality AIDS. Of there it. were straight people that did get AIDS mm -hmm. for one reason or another. And then there was like the poster child, Ryan White, who was the young, like what, 14 year old mm -hmm. boy who had a blood transfusion right. and it had um, HIV virus in it. So he ended up getting AIDS and then he died, unfortunately, right? But he was an anomaly, but he was treated as if this, this was everybody. This could be everybody, mm -hmm. right? And so there was a big criticism that at that time, the campaign that was waged was waged for everybody, making all the housewives who were living in stable homes afraid that they may be the next one to get AIDS, when in reality, they were some of the least at risk. And so we sent resources. We have a limited number of resources. We were just talking about this in our episode on privatization. Mm -hmm. Government doesn't have an incentive to utilize resources wisely. And so in this particular case, I think it's a good example. We're trying to do this thing and, and save all these kids, th this group of kids that might actually really be at risk. We're trying to save them by applying a rule for everybody. And I think that's where it actually fails. Mm -hmm. And this is this is why I, I, I usually disagree but with these laws. These, the, the, the thing is, is there are kids who are at risk. On a practical at, sense. There are kids who are at risk at home and have nothing to do with sexual Oh yeah, preference or anything. Well, well there's, there's some straight just, kids that are at risk from uh, yes. an abusive parent too. Yeah, yeah that's what absolutely. I'm saying. And, and I think that the more we divide and the more we try to put these attention in these other places, rather than why don't we just look at a place where children are abused? Period. Right. Isn't, isn't that the bigger yeah. issue? Right. Who cares about what the reason the kids right. are abused? Let's address that as a whole. If you think right. there's, the, if you think that's such a big problem, go address it. Right. But then address those. You, right. you know what I'm saying. So, so, know, so, so this this oh, line yeah, that yeah. I highlighted, I'm okay with it. I have no issue. Okay. I take no issue with it uh, other than the fact that it's just one more rule that we're applying to school. And I'm not a big fan of public schools in the first place. But since public schools are here and we, we are having this conversation, I have no issue necessarily but, with this. Here's the other side of this also. For city council here in town, I have no say. 
in the school system. Well, no, we you separate. don't. Correct. Yeah, correct. Uh, I know St. John's County is having a conversation right now. And so this bill would actually supersede what St. John's County is trying to do, which I believe is implement some sort of procedure or something okay. that would say that you can have a conversation with a student without the parent. Uh, no, I think it, it's um, uh, if a student says, I want you to use my pronoun, you do my, perf my, my preferential pronoun that the the parents are uh, do not need to be alerted. So, so that's what they're trying. And so this bill would actually supersede what they're trying to do in St. John County, okay. which is the, for anybody that's not in Florida, that's the next county over. All right, so let's take a look. There's two more here. Um, so this one says, uh, this next one says, number two, it says a school district may not adopt procedures or student support forms that require school district personnel to withhold from a parent information about his or her student's mental, emotional, or physical health or well-being, well-being or a change in related services or monitoring, or that encourage or have the effect of encouraging a student to withhold from a parent such information unless a reasonably prudent person would believe that such disclosure would result in abuse, abandonment, or neglect as those terms are defined. Very long, very long sentence. What it's saying is um, a school district cannot implement some sort of procedure mm -hmm. that uh, requires students or, or requires teachers to not tell a parent. So if my son is going to a school mm -hmm. and he says, I am, you know, and, and confides in one of his teachers that he is gay or he's transgender, the school cannot adopt a policy that says um, the, the teacher may not tell me. Okay. So, so by rights and saying that the teacher has to alert the parents? Um it says, uh, let's see here, or change in related services that encourage or have the effect of encouraging students. So what, what they're basically doing is the school can't have a policy that the school does not inform the parent or encourages the student to not tell. So what they're basically saying is you you have to leave it available, the, the option available to talk to parents about this. I don't, this, this particular section doesn't say that you have to tell the parents. But, but it just can? says it says you can't limit them from telling parents. But here's the here's the thing. So remember that one student that said you'll have tens of thousands who are dying and there'll be blood mm -hmm. all over your hands and people are like, you know, there's all these there's all this big concern. There is an exception here, and that exception is in the very tail end, and it says unless a reasonably prudent person would believe that such disclosure would disclose uh, would result in abuse, abandonment. Or neglect. So, in other words, if I'm the teacher, your son comes to me and says, "Hey, man, you know, I think I might be gay," and then I'm, we are the school does not, I cannot say, "Don't tell your dad," unless he's also said, "My dad's abusive." Okay, but and he might beat the snot out of me. How many times have kids right? made and said stuff like that because they didn't like the parents made them eat right. all their dinner so, or these? So, type of things. if I believe that the student is actually in reasonable danger at home, so then, you know then I can encourage them to not tell you. But, but hold on. So, it, like hold it's, on. No, no, no. Hold so on. it's there. No, no, no. Here's the thing. If you think that kid is in danger at home, I don't give a crap what the topic is. That needs to be addressed. If you think that kid right. is truly at risk at home. Right. Okay, forget about this topic. Right. Something, shouldn't something be done? I think so, but there's, you know, think about it. Look at, look here what it says. Um, it identifies three things, right? It says if, if it... Abuse, if, abandonment, or neglect? Right. So abuse and abandonment are pretty clear, mm -hmm. right? Um, neglect is... Uh, I, I, I'm, there may be a very specific legal Hold definition. On. I don't think that but abuse what does it is mean very clear either. Who's determining abuse? Well, I, I'm saying abuse may be specifically defined, defined somewhere. And okay. we're probably going to understand it. Like abuse might mean physical abuse or, you know, something like that. So uh, without further definition, yeah, it is vague. Because abuse, I mean, some people are like, hey, if you spank a child, that's abuse. Other people exactly. are like, no, if you punch a child in the eye or and black it. If you raise your voice, that's right, abuse. You, right, you like know, there's, there's all these variations. Them. But I think legally speaking, I think that there's probably a likely a, um, a very clear definition of abuse and abandonment. There may be one for neglect as well. Neglect seems to me of the three to be the most vague in any situation. Okay. Like what does it mean to neglect, neglect a child? Like if they come home and they want to tell me about their A and I'm not interested because I'm busy working, is that neglect? No, I don't, know. I got, I like, got I don't think it is. I'll talk I mean, to you later. But, right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if I don't, if I'm not interested in their schoolwork at all, is that neglect? Yeah. I mean, it's arguable, but I, I think it's probably not neglect. Right, right. But um, so I, you know, I, but the, but the thing here is, what people are, co are complaining about, what they're saying, and, and they're saying like, look, this is going to forbid them. It doesn't entirely forbid them because there's an out. There's an out that says if you have reasonable suspicion, 
if, if a reasonable person or a prudent person believes that withholding this information, either from the school or from the student, um, if, if withholding it would prevent them from, you know, incurring abuse, abandonment, or neglect, then it, then it's legally permitted. So there is a legal permission to do so. It's not entirely 100% out, which is kind of the impression that you get from both of those clips, because neither clip mentions this clause that gives teachers an out. Mm -hmm. And so I, so, so when you're watching news, I feel like this is the problem that we get is people show you what they want and they, they neglect the parts that kind of actually uh, are a counterpoint to what they're saying. Right. You know, so I, so, so I what's your highlighted about, part there, the next part? So the next part, the orange part. So yeah. this, is, this is, I think, the more interesting part. This is the part I think that's really rubbing people raw. Okay. And so it says a school district may not encourage classroom discussion about sexual orientation or gender identity in primary grade levels or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students. A lot of vague terms in there, all right? So like uh, sexual orientation is pretty, like I think most people would pre be pretty clear what that means. Gender identity, that one is like the gender com the, the gender identity community, I think they feel like, I, I think they would have a consistent understanding of what that means. I think people that are outside of it have no idea. Okay. Like, what does that mean? What do you mean gender identity? Because most people are going to go, there's two genders. You are either a woman or you're a male or female. Mm -hmm. Like, right? Like, those are your genders. Pick, you know, not pick one, but, you know. Right. Wh whichever one you're born with based on visual appearance, right? Um, and then you've got uh, age appropriate. What does age appropriate mean? Because a lot of people have conversations with their kids and like you might it say, ought not be a conversation you know, like with maybe their kids. that's not an age appropriate conversation for you mm -hmm. to have right you know and then developmentally appropriate again a very big <clears throat> term so you mentioned something earlier and primary grade so it was asked of the author uh joe harding rep uh representative joe harding a republican and he said that he believes that primary grade means k to five okay however the florida department of education apparently defines primary grade as k to 12. So they're saying that. So we. So now, even nowhere. primary grade is now not very clear. What does it mean? Well, okay. Let me ask you a question. Because talking to a seventeen-year-old about gender stuff and talking to a fourth grader, a fourth mm -hmm. grader, way different, right? He, Big difference. Let, let me ask you a question. What class do you do this in? I would assume health class. That's where I learned all my sexual orientation and all that. You know. Like I remember, I was in a Catholic so, school. So, so in this one applies to any grade. math teacher, any history teacher. This is only going I mean, to apply to the ones that have the appropriate type of class for the lesson. Well, it doesn't say that. It just says uh, you may not encourage it in a classroom. So, uh, could a math teacher say, "Hey, what, today we're going to"? Why is a math teacher addressing? Oh, any oh I don't think they the should place? be exactly. But here's the here's the fun part, and I don't have videos for this, but you can go find them. Go to libs of tip TikTok. On uh, I Twitter, I feeling I don't want to. Uh, you probably don't want to. But, okay, all right. <laughs> but there are tons of videos from TikTok. And what, what this, what they do is they aggregate a lot of videos okay. of liberal people, right? And there are plenty of videos of teachers, and they're almost always like twenty-five range, like they're younger teachers. Okay. And there's a lot of teachers that are like that are expressing how they've had conversations about gender with their students, and like I think even elementary school students. And, and they're simple. I mean, they're not like, you know, they're not getting, they're not going in depth and all that, but they're just like, some people are different, blah, blah, blah. And this is the conversation. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But when I say that's fine, I mean, like, there is a reason to say there's a health class. Let's have conversations about health related mm -hmm. matters. That makes sense to me. If you're a math teacher and that's what you do, you, you are literally the math teacher. I come to you and I sit down and I'm supposed to learn my times tables, mm -hmm. right? I don't expect that you're going to be teaching about gender there. And that if a teacher is asked about it, the teacher say, well, you're going to have to wait until you go to so-and-so's class and talk about it in health class because that's where it's appropriate to have a conversation. Okay. And, you know, to me, that would be appropriate. Now, the content, I think that, that that starts getting into a gray area. And I think the failure of this bill is it doesn't really specify what, like we've already got a discrepancy between what the author of the bill said is a primary grade and what the Florida it Department is, of Education. Right. And that needs to be resolved. We cannot pass a bill, like, cause that's a big deal. That's a huge K deal. K to five, K to 12, that's a huge deal. If you're talking about, hey, we're gonna talk to seniors about gender identity. I mean, you might as well, they're definitely talking about it. So I mean, I, I you know, like I don't say might but, as well, but it, it's not on, nearly I, as a problem. You, hold on, don't you think right there you just answered the thing? We might as well. They're already talking about it. Right. They're already talking about it. Yeah. 
why is it then the school's responsibility? I don't, I don't say it's, I don't want to, okay. So I don't think it's the school's responsibility per se. And so to but me, if it's a topic is... that's underneath health class, I don't have, I, I don't necessarily have an issue with it. It depends on what they're teaching, right? If they're teaching, like, if if they're saying, here's how you can, uh, you, you, you know, if you want hormone blockers and your parent doesn't want them and here's how you can go about it. I think that's inappropriate. Yes. Okay. Wildly inappropriate. I don't think that they should be teaching anything that goes, uh, uh, that, that, uh, um, suggests the child should undermine their parents. I don't think that's a good idea. Now withholding some information when there's a, you know, maybe a potential problem at home. Okay. But, but, fine. But once again, mm. that, that, that makes me a little bit nervous a potential problem that, that you, something those phrases have come up several times through this and that who determines that like how many let's be honest with you how many public school parents know the teachers and how many the other way around how many public school teachers actually know the parents right you be right none right Listen, even in the private school that i taught it which was smaller didn't have all right. of these students i didn't know most of those parents right okay and if i did it was never enough that i would know their whole home situation right, right. so the problem is they're going to make a lot of assumptions from the start yeah so now it's going to turn into well if the kid comes and goes yeah my parents are kind of jerks right well, that could be because they didn't let me use the car or right. it could be you know what my dad beats me like well where, where does that fit in right right and so i don't like the fact that they're going to make these decisions that we either are going to not say anything because right. I, you might have it rough at home. But, right. but based on whose standards right. and based on what's going on, there's a lot of issues inside of this. Yeah. So are we saying that the the law as it's written, okay, or the bill as it's written, right, is saying that we will not talk about these things, um, or is it saying we will talk about these things? But like I I don't understand. Am I missing says, something here? So. I think opponents of it have mischaracterized it when they say don't say gay. That's what it's called, the don't say gay bill. Right. And because it, right here, it doesn't tell you that you absolutely cannot talk about it. No. It says that you cannot encourage the discussion um, in primary grade levels, which is undefined, or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate. So that again, we're we're dealing with a clause here that undermines the opponent's argument. The opponents are making out like we won't be able to talk about being gay at all, but that's not what it says. So if you're if if the Florida Department of Education is correct that primary is K to 12, mm -hmm. then you can absolutely in ninth grade in health class say some people are gay, some people are trans, um and you know here's what we know about it right you can have that conversation because it would be age appropriate and developmentally appropriate depending on what material you're providing and a them, seven right? year old it's not there seven year old is different right um you know i don't i i, I would have trouble understanding an age appropriate way of having a conversation about trans with a seven year old maybe gay well, whatever happened to you know what that's a conversation you should have at home. Because the, the, I, th I think there's a drastic difference between sexual orientation and gender orientation. And I think sexual orientation is a little bit easier to understand for even younger kids. You can just say, yeah, you know, like at some point kids are like, ooh, you like girls, you're gross, you got cooties. Like, and they're just, they're just like the idea of liking somebody else seems silly to them of mm -hmm. So I don't think those kids need to be having conversations about sexual orientation or gender orientation. Right? <laughs> exactly. Because they're still on the cooties age. Mm -hmm. But once they start getting past that, once we start getting more to like adolescence, we're now like, hmm, you know, so-and-so is attractive. Okay, I think that's a conversation where you can start saying, okay, there are some people that do like guys, you know, guys that like guys, there are some girls that like girls, and there are some, you know, guys that, you know, they, they, they feel like they're, they, they're in the wrong body. Right, I think you could start with very simple conversations. And then as you get older, 16, 17, you can have more complex conversations. And I think that's, you know, so I think that the bill so, permits for that. So, so when they say, don't say gay, I actually don't believe that it's accurate. So you think it's, it's accurate. wrongly labeled? I do. I think it's wrongly labeled. Okay. But I do think there are some real problems to be had in the bill that they're not talking I, I, about. I think of all of this, the, the problem is that we have to come down to, it's not the school's responsibility. It, I, I agree. And to me, I think maybe I'm struggling with getting past that. All of these other things, maybe in the arguments, but I go, it's not the school's responsibility. Teach my kid right. science, math, English. Right. Teach those things. Well, people would say okay. science includes health, right? 
because we had a health class. I had a health class. We learned about like, you know, did the you learn, ovary, did you learn the about testes. transgender and everything in it? I don't, it was barely a thing when I was growing up. Exactly. Right. But, but did we learn about, um, I learned about homosexuality in health class all through high school and everything. Did you? No. Oh, I, I'm trying to remember if I did. I can't like, I don't remember. remember it. I know we learned. Because if we did, I'd remember that. Because, gotcha. you know, we'd be joking. We'd be messing it around and saying comments and stuff I mean, like the that. only thing I remember, I was in a Catholic school. I was in sixth grade, I think. And I wasn't very bright, I guess. Because we were watching a video and we, we had nuns. So, like, right. most yeah. all, all, the, all the teachers, I think, were female. Mm-hmm. And I remember they were talking about masturbation. And I was like, what's that? And you could see the teacher was like, Okay, how, how am I gonna? How am I gonna tell this young boy? Uh-huh. And then my buddy leans over and he's like, jacking off. And the teacher was like, "You understand?" I was like, "Oh yeah." yeah now, I like I just didn't know the term, uh, right? Like okay. I understood. What, like oh, oh that okay, gotcha. That. Okay, I didn't know there was another word. Like right, <laughs> how right. many words are there? It, you know. But but your students, they they realize that that's not a place for this. Like I, I think that's our problem with our education system as a whole. It's getting out of hand, right? And it's focusing on the things that are not there right. for their role. Right. Know your role. Do it. Well, stay I th- in your lane. I think what makes this bill. I think what drives people to write bills like this is not that people want to have the conversation. It's how they want to have the conversation. I think they want to do it on a more moral level. And they want to say, look, there are some people that are trans and you have you have to respect that. And if you don't respect that, you are a bad person. I'm a bigot according right. to what's Right, you're called. a bigot, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and this is the problem that I have with this kind of stuff is because I feel like school should be is as far away from teaching morals as yes. possible because your morals and my morals do not line up perfectly right mm-hmm. i mean it's possible that your morals and your wife's morals are slightly yeah there'll separate, be different things that right there'll be of, some uh-huh. things where you're like ah it's not a big deal why are you making you know yeah. you, you know like like no two people really have the same exact set of morals but then when you start getting out in different families it gets very different right you know like um some families are like look we don't talk about you know sexuality until you're at least you know ninth grade and other kids other parents might be like look we're starting that early we're talking you know in fifth grade i'm gonna start telling you about it you know i'll give you an example and, and, of where it's not even like that santa okay yeah okay some kids yeah let's raise up without, yeah, yeah yeah some kids are raised up without santa at all other kids don't learn about it till they're nine years old and right it's not real and it's all based on in the school where's the school okay you know what so i want to pass a bill that sounds horrible i said i don't mean this right like, i want to pass a bill that it says you know what you can't talk about santa Right. Because some kids still believe in Santa and other kids don't. So right. now inside the school, I want to limit what you're able to do and what you're able to say because of those kids who don't understand right. it because their house does it differently. I haven't seen bills and, for that, but I've seen people make similar arguments. Okay. Okay. So now like, here's, for real. Like, here's my question, though. Wouldn't you go, that's absurd. Right. And I would go, you're right. It is absurd, isn't yeah. it? What's the difference? Right. You're no, now I, I, taking something that we're raised up in our house right. to for one thing. Listen, there are certain things that hold true. English, math, science, those type right. of things, the actual science stuff, those hold true. Right. Okay. That's not about whether you're Christian or not right. Christian. These are the truths. Right. That's what the school is there for. Yep. Okay. You are not there to teach my kids morality. Right. Because like you and, said, we're and, different. And and the funny part is, I think that you can actually teach some level of morality at a very basic level that most people would agree with. You get that anyway. You can just be like, there. look. You don't steal people. Don't hit people. Don't hit people. Don't steal from them. Mm-hmm. Don't call them names. If they if, if 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 they have a complaint, sit down, listen to them, hear what they have to say, give the most charitable version of what they were saying to you, like like think that, that, that okay, that yeah. maybe not, maybe not that. But one. but what I'm saying you is know. like there's like all these things that that society would likely agree upon, and if the issue and if somebody came out and said, well yeah, I know you taught me to be nice to people, not to steal people, not to hurt them, not to you know call them names, but this person's a trans, again. Don't steal stuff. <laughs> don't hurt people. Don't call them names. You know, mm-hmm. did did you use a, did you say, ha, 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 you're a tranny? Okay, that's calling <laughs> somebody a name. But, but, you have failed the simple lesson that applies to everyone, but, and, and, and right? All, all, yes, like but, that, and, and that's and what we reality, should be teaching. When do you think, you, you are never going to change kids. You are right. not going to do it. Kids make fun of kids. Right, now, right. I'm not okay. It's just the reality of things. Right, and, and I think what we need to do is we need to stick to the core. Yes. And, and I, I guess the problem is, we said it a moment ago, when I was growing up, I don't remember, like, I might have heard of, like, a transgender person every great once in a while. And, it, you, you know, you didn't really know what it was. You know, you just kind of heard this you know, this, right. this concept or whatever. And we, we probably had a very misinterpreted, mis, uh, misguided. Now we had gay deal, kids in our school. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. But there was a very misguided, I, 
whatever I thought of a transgender person, if I even heard the term when I was like in middle school, would have most likely been an absolutely distorted view of what a transgender person really is. Right. Okay. So, so like it was just that rare and there wasn't much conversation about it. Right. So here's the thing. If you teach somebody the absolute basics and you say, it doesn't matter what you learn, what, what new idea pops up in the future. Right. Or how more prominent an idea pops up. Because mm-hmm. transgender people were around back when I was a kid. They just you didn't really hear much about right. it. Now you hear about it all the time. So now it's just more prominent. Okay, great. So you take the same basic lesson. Don't hurt people. Don't steal their stuff. Don't call them names. Listen to them. Be nice. You know, all this other stuff. Like all that applies. And guess what? When all of a sudden you're hearing this new thing that you've never heard of about transgender students. Or, you know... Um, uh, uh, pronouns and mm-hmm. all, all this other stuff. All of that still applies. So all you need to focus on is these core lessons. They apply. They apply whether the kid is straight or whether they're transgender. You'd be nice to people, right? This is the lesson that I'm going to be teaching my son. And it doesn't matter in 20 years if there's some new phenomenon. Oh, mm-hmm. so I'm going to be like, treat Same people nicely. Life. Don't hurt people. Don't steal their stuff. Don't call them names. Don't be a bully. All, you know, all, all these things that apply mm-hmm. and it doesn't, but I feel like what we're doing is we're trying to narrow it in specifically so that we can say, and who was it? One of those videos, <coughs> they said it, you probably didn't catch it, but they said, we need to change. We need to, uh, not narrative. What was the term they used? Um, uh, normalize, normalize, yes. normalize that every was the key with the black hair. Yes. And I think that's what's happening. What's happening is people want to normalize it, which means you have to agree with it. And I'm like, I do not. I have to respect individuals as an individual. I have to not steal their stuff. But I do. I shouldn't call them names. I do not have to condone it or put up with it. I I shouldn't have have to. to. I shouldn't call them names. Like I don't have to, but I shouldn't. I shouldn't call people names. I shouldn't be mean to people. I shouldn't pick on them. You know, if I see somebody being picked on, I should probably step in. That's a that's a reasonable ask in most cases, Mm -hmm. right? Um, You know, so these are things that I should do, right? Um, But I think that's not good enough. And so you have this crowd that's like, well, we need to teach this, and I think. They're real. I, I think they're not being honest with themselves, and they're definitely not being honest with other people. I think they're really dr- the driving factor for them is they want to normalize certain behaviors, basically force others to accept this love, this mm-hmm. particular moral view. And I'm like, that's why I think we're having this big fight. And I think the Republicans are trying to say, nope, we're gonna we're gonna fight back. But I think they're doing it poorly. I think there's problems with this bill. Okay. Right. I, I don't But know. I think the bill is actually being mislabeled. Right. You know, there are problems with it because like again, what does it mean to be primary education or yeah, uh no, primary grade. What is a primary grade? Well, I can't really decide whether I really am for the bill or not if it's K to five or K to twelve, which yeah, is that's a huge difference. Changing things, right. Right. Because is it is it okay to have certain conversations in health class to, with an eleventh grader? Yes. Same conversation let, let, with the fourth let, grader? Let me ask no. you a question, because they always want to argue curriculum and all this other stuff. So what happens if you're learning um, how the human body works in health class? Mm-hmm. Okay, the effects of vegetables on your body. Right. That's not a conversation for, like, I think that then just, because here's what's going to happen. They're going to go, yeah, health class. So they're going to allow that to dictate everything that happens inside of health class. And I go, no, 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 there's still a curriculum in a sense right and this is still our topic for right we're not going to let you just come into health class now and hijack right. it right so that now all we talk about in here right is this topic well i think i think the uh the analogy might be imagine that we are pushing for more conversations about veg- eating vegetables and having vegetables right and the conversation i think is kind of tantamount to saying well we just want to talk about the the benefits of vegetables when what they're really trying to do is drive people toward maybe a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle oh so what you're right. saying is without saying specifically what it's going right. to be about they're going to be influenced right. based on their own personal There's, beliefs they, they, so they, how is this different they, they, I, I, how is this different right it's the same it's the same, same exactly. now now i don't think that necessarily they're trying to make i know the argument is like they're trying to make every kid transgender i don't think that's the case for most people i do think that they're trying to uh force oh, everybody hold, to normalize hold on hold on hold on you just said it would be common that right. it's possible that these teachers could go, this is why we should all be vegans. Right. Okay. I, my analogy but, wasn't 100. It was, no, it wasn't no but you're not wrong. The right. fear is that that's what could be made. The argument right. could be made, then we just steer people in a direction. Okay. Same thing. I, yeah. 
I think you because could now, them. Because now what happens when that teacher has thinking that says, no, this, let's normalize this. Right. And then and the household goes, no, 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 no. Right. We do not normalize right. this. Now what happens? Right. I think there's a difference between steering a child in a direction and saying we should normalize. I think and it's entirely trust, different. Do you trust every public school teacher to lead that child no. in the right direction? And, and that's another conversation to have. Like, so let's think about this. Um, in the past, liberals have been upset because of creationism and intelligent design in the right. school. Right. And they're like, that's not real science, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to have that conversation here. But they've had that issue. And then parents who were, were, were religious said, you know, we don't believe in this whole evolution thing. And so we feel like you're teaching the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then um, students kind of really didn't get a great education either way. Um, math, they were doing OK, but a lot of kids have trouble, trouble with math. And we actually have pretty low test scores. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids failed to learn how to read. Um, very well. So they, they come out and they've got like maybe a sixth grade reading level when they're like a 12th grader, right? Mm -hmm. they, they've got very terrible reading scores. Um, then you get into like, uh, we, we, you've had documentaries over the years about bullies and how schools have failed at, at bullies for whatever right. reason. It doesn't matter <laughs> whether it's related to sexuality or gender or just because the kid's a dorky nerd that's got glasses and pimples, mm -hmm. right? Like whatever, you know? So uh, topic after topic after topic, the schools have failed to do a good job teaching. But yet, people are like, well, we need to, we need to do this thing with gender. Okay, how about this? If, if tens of thousands of kids are at risk in Florida. If that's even true. The, we, it, let's just assume for a moment it is. Okay. Tens of thousands of kids are at risk. There'll be blood on the hands. Is there anything in the history of education that has told you, that's led you to believe that the public school system is the right place to try to ensure no. their safety. No. I mean, I just no. watched a girl <laughs> get knocked right. out mm -hmm. in like uh, probably not elementary school, but probably junior high. Mm -hmm. it looked about, it might have been high school, might have been like a the junior, uh, uh, like uh, a freshman. freshman. Yeah, it might have been a freshman, but it was, it was, it definitely wasn't like a, it didn't seem to be, to be like a senior, but it doesn't right. matter. Like, okay, I saw a girl, it looked like she got knocked out from being punched while the teacher stood there and said, no, no, stop it. Don't do that. And I'm like, so honestly, if my child was gay um, or transgender, I don't think I would feel comfortable with the school, you know, leaving it in their hands to to even properly protect him because, or teach his peers how to be a good person because they can't do it yet anyway. So what happens when, because they said if unless they believe that the house will not be conducive to properly right. handling the situation. Right. Okay. That's its so, own vagary, but. <clears throat> what's that? That's its own vagueness. Uh, okay. So here's what happens. So let's say we're Christians and your son goes into school and says, hey, you know, and that teacher goes, oh, but they're Christians. Oh, no, we can't do this because they're going to think this and they're going to do that. Right. And so now they've made another way that they can go, oh, I can't, I, I'm not going to say nothing. I got to protect them. I got to do this. Here. Right. No, no I, it is not their place to do any of those right. type of things. If you have your kids in the public school system, I think we start getting back to, you know what? Why don't you really focus on the things they ought to be learning here? The right. things that are expected for them to, learn, to right. learn here. This is not it. Even better, why don't we start thinking about privatizing like the conversation we had with education instead uh -huh. you give um we can start with giving parents the money and saying you go find a school that fits you that and fits then that your belief and, and now and, if you're in a christian school they go right. we don't play this game right now and you go okay now i get it this game. i i get it <clears throat> that still might leave a gay or transgender student who has not come out to their parents but you know who might be religious that sends them to a religious school like so i i realize that mm -hmm. you know but again um, that's the problem that, we, but, as but you said, that's like the said, problem the, that's always existed. Yeah, but the thing and is, as I pointed out, talking about it, right? They are probably already talking to and, other kids and other things, right? And, 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 and with the internet. and schools already have shown that they're that at least the public schools have shown that they don't deal with it well anyway. No. So the idea that all of a sudden schools are now going to be able to protect students, I think, if you is believe based, that, they get bigger issues. Anyway. I think it's based on absolutely nothing. There's not a shred of evidence for it, you know? So I think we're better off, if you absolutely must, I think we're better off saying, putting our heads together and saying, all right, there is a small pocket of students, of children, Let's deal with them who are in poor homes, not poor homes financially, but, but bad homes. Mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we take all of our big brains and whatever money we are gonna spend, hopefully private money, not public money, right. but how are we gonna do that and help them specifically 
them. The ones at risk. Right. The ones at risk. Because you know what? Honestly, there was a story. I read a story about the other day. Uh, allegedly, I think it was even in Florida. A kid um, was wearing makeup at school, but would wipe it off before he got home. And I guess one day forgot. And his mom found out, told her boyfriend. And the boyfriend started choking the boy. And he was made in the way the article was written, it kind of in the way the, the kid's testimony was, it kind of suggested that he said something like, oh, you know, are you a slur of some sort, uh -huh. right? You know, and then, you know, abuse the boy. Of course, the guy, like, three-time felon or something crazy. I don't know. Like, he yeah, had, that, he had that, a rap that, record. It, it, right. And he was like, no, I totally didn't. We had a conversation. It was stern, but we didn't. Okay, probably not. It sounds like you probably did assault the kid. You know, so there are situations where, yes, this does happen. And there are men that... um that don't seem to understand that it's not that damn big of a deal. Right? Like if their son is gay or transgender, like it's not that big of a deal. I mean, is in, in the way they think it is. Right. Right. And and so there are people that are problem. And what I mean by that is like, I've seen the guys that post like in men, in men forums and they're like, well, my three-year-old was playing with makeup with my girlfriend. What do I do? And I'm like, nothing. nothing. You do nothing. If you must do something, take him out and go fishing. Go have fun with him when it's your time. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. That's it. You don't worry about it because one, he's three, so who, who cares? He plays right, three right. years, play with everything. Um, you know, so you 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 enjoy having a good time. But there are men that think like, oh man, I got to nip this in the bud. No, you don't. You don't stop worrying about your somebody else's sexuality. Worry about your own. <coughs> right. So there are people that, and 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 some of those are probably not bad homes, but there are some who are bad homes. No son of mine will be a. a a blankety blank, mm -hmm. right? Like I got that. Deal with those. That's who we deal with. That that's where that's where we start. You know, we start working on it. So I think we should close this, right? Yes, close it. Let's close this. Close up. it. So ultimately, I'm not a fan of this bill. I think there's some real problems with the bill that need to be worked out. Overall, what they're trying to do, I don't necessarily have a problem with it because I believe that there are people that are trying to normalize behavior and normalizing behavior effectively means saying you who do not agree with this must agree with it. And I think that what they're trying to do is go underhandedly through the children. We Everybody always wants to go through the children. They always want to try to, you know, change the children because we sure as hell, it's it's too damn much work to try to change the adults' minds. So mm -hmm. we'll just change the children and call it a day, right? So no, I think it's an under, I think people are not being honest. They really want to normalize a lot of things that people don't want to be normalized. Normalized, of course, again, being dictating you must agree with this mm -hmm. or else you are a bigot bad person yeah okay not normalize in the sense and say hey each individual has the right to be who they want and you can't interfere not that kind of normalization that one i'd be fine with. I'm fine with yeah so um <coughs> I, I think there's problems with the bill i think that the opponents are uh mislabeling the bill and i think that some of their concerns are actually addressed in the bill and i think that everybody should read the bill that's in florida and they should decide whether they agree with it or not but I think the biggest thing is uh, we need to figure out what primary grade means. Yes, because that will change a number of things. So, all right. Well, that's it for this show. Thank you for watching in, and hopefully your uh, hopefully your run for at large has not tanked from anything that you no, said in here. I'm okay. With it. So, and you know, who knows? Maybe you'll work with Joshua Hicks, and uh, who knows? Maybe you guys will work out something good right. if he, if both of you get elected. Mm -hmm. If he gets elected, when you get elected. Right there, you go. So, all right, absolutely. All right. Well, have a good one, everybody. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to Facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.